So it's nearly summer, although you wouldn't believe it here in the UK, so I'm going to bring a little bit of summer your way with this coral makeup look. So I'm starting off with Pixi's Hydrating Milky Mist. This is a great way to add hydration to your face before applying your foundation. And the one I'm going to be using is the Natasha Denona Foundation X. You've seen me use this a couple of times of recent and I'm really liking it. I wouldn't necessarily wear it for every day but I really like it for filming my tutorials. It's quite a full coverage foundation but I can get away with it because I'm under the bright lights. But if you like a full coverage foundation for every day then definitely check it out. Next I'm going in with the Sculpt and Glow palette by Natasha Denona and I'm using the Cream Contour. The brush I'm working it in with is by Zoeva and it's the 117 Petite Defined Buffer. The shape of this brush is slightly angled and it's perfect for working it into the hollows of the cheeks because it's nice and small and as it's made from synthetic hairs it works really well with cream products. Once I've applied the majority of the colour I then go in with my foundation brush to work that over the top to soften the colour. And the reason this works well is because there's foundation residue left in the bristles. And also because we haven't set the foundation in place, the cream just blends over the foundation really easily. On a smaller brush, I'm taking that down the sides of my nose. Again, this is a synthetic brush. This one is from Crown. This is a domed brush, so it works down the side of your nose really easily. When using a contour down the side of your nose, especially a cream one, make sure you work the excess off onto the back of your hand first and only use what's left on the bristles. Otherwise, you're going to find that you've got a muddy appearance down the sides of your nose. I always go back in with my foundation brush just to soften everything and make sure it's less visible. I'm also working this cream contour in around my hairline and as you can see it's starting to give my face more dimension. And by this I mean my face doesn't look as flat, it's got more shape to it. On the same small synthetic brush by Crown I'm also taking a small amount of that through the temple area. Again it's just about adding shape and it makes your cheekbone look more prominent. Moving on to brows, I'm going to start off with my Diego de la Palma to fill in my brows and then I'm going to set them in place with the Benefit Ready Set Brow. So using the spoolie end of my brush, I'm giving them a comb first. Then I always use the pencil to fill in the very base of the front of my eyebrow and feather the colour upwards with a really light hand. You'll notice that I'm not holding the pencil towards the very front, I'm holding the very end of the handle. And this enables you to have a really feather-like touch. So you can see I'm working my way along the very top, framing the eyebrow, and I'm following where my natural hair grows, it's just very light in colour, so it's not very visible. And then on the base of the brow I've got a tiny bit of hair missing there, so I'm filling that in. And then when I face forward you can see now the brow is starting to look a lot fuller. For the tail and the arch of the brow, I'm following my natural shape again, and darkening the perimeters where the hair is most light. And this is going to help make the shape that's naturally there that isn't very visible, more visible. So now you can see that both brows are done and I'm sure you'll agree that they both look very very natural and that's because I followed my natural shape with a really light hand using a pencil that matches the colour of my natural brows. And then I just set the hairs in place using the clear brow gel. Now I'm taking Urban Decay's Naked Skin Concealer. This is a weightless complete coverage concealer and I'm working that in underneath the eyes using another synthetic brush. It's really important to use synthetic bristles because if you use anything with natural hair with a creamy based product, it's just going to clump in the hair. Moving on to the eyes, I'm using NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. I'm working that onto the skin directly from the pencil and then I'm blending it in with my finger. The warmth from your finger is going to help to melt that product in and this is going to work as a base for the eyeshadow. Because it's white, it's going to allow that coral shade, hi Thomas, it's going to allow that coral shade to appear more true to colour. I'm using Illa Masca's blush in the shade Lover and we're going to use this as the eyeshadow. So I'm using a flat shader brush as this is really going to pick up that pigment and pack it onto the eye and I'm pressing it onto that milk pencil that we've already applied onto the eyelid. Now as this blush is a matte finish I find the best way to get an even coverage is to press it on. If you just try and go straight on with swiping motions you're going to find that you get more of a streaky finish. Now I'm going in with a fluffy blending brush and a very small amount of that same powder and I'm going to work this through the socket. The reason I'm now using a blending brush is because I want a slightly softer finish and I want it to fade off and look blended. I'm now taking My Tie Eyeshadow by Makeup Geek and this is described as an apricot base with an orchid reflect and I'm using my ring finger just to press this over the top of the mobile eyelid. Then I'm taking I'm Peachless which is also by Makeup Geek and this is a buff base with peachy pink reflex and on my ring finger I'm applying this to the inner corner of the eyes. Both of these eyeshadows are duochrome, they have a two tone effect so when you look one way or look the other you'll get different colours coming off of the eyeshadow. Moving on to eyeliner, I'm using Bobbi Brown's Longwear Gel Liner in the colour Sepia Ink 
and on my eyeliner brush I'm working that all the way along the waterline from the very inner corner to the very outer corner and then using the bristles I'm going to work that underneath my top lashes and I sometimes find the best way to do this is to blink onto the brush. Now I'm taking Natasha Denona's Work and Set Cream Eyeliner and this is in the shade Noir which is black and using the same brush I'm lining that top lash line. We're placing the brush at the very inner corner of the eye and dragging it all the way along as close to the lashes as possible and creating a flick on the outer edge. Once you're happy with your basic line, you can then go along and thicken the outer edge. The easiest way to thicken your flick is to always pull your brush back on itself towards your eyelid. Now I'm taking Max Paint Pot in the colour Constructivist and on a small smudge of brush I'm working this underneath the lower lashes. I'm smudging it quite low but it's completely optional, you can do it as low as you like and I'm feathering it from the outer flick and I'm going all the way across to the inner corner of the eye to meet I'm Peachless and this is a warm brown with a metallic finish and then I'm going over that with Indian Wood also by MAC and this is just going to soften it giving it a slightly more bronzy appearance and that's going to complement those coral shades we've got on the eyes quite well you could go straight in with Indian Wood but it wouldn't be as smoky having Constructivist underneath gives it a light smoke now it's time for mascara, I'm using Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and I'm applying a couple of coats to my top and bottom lashes and then I'm applying Melrose Avenue lashes by Backstage Beauty. On the box it says you get 25 wears and I love that these are super spiky and fluffy, they're just really really beautiful. Going back to my Natasha Denona Sculpt and Glow palette, I'm taking the powder highlight and I'm going to use that to set underneath my eyes and through the T section of my face. This is going to keep the foundation in place and also eliminate any shine. Then we're going into the powder contour and I'm going to sit over the area that we applied the cream contour earlier. I'm making sure to tap off the excess because we don't want to make this area too dark. We just want to set it in place and just emphasise it a little bit more. If you're happy with the shade of your contour then you don't have to set it with a contour powder. You can just set it with a translucent powder. Going back into my Illa Masca Lover Blush, I'm applying this to the apples of the cheeks. Now you want it to be quite visible, it's going to be in keeping with the eyes and the lips and having this pop of colour on your cheeks is really going to add youthful vibrancy to your skin and make you look more fresh. I'm taking the duochrome eyeshadow in I'm Peachless and I'm applying a very tiny amount on the tip of my nose and my cupid's bow. I'm also going to apply a little bit on the brow bone and a very tiny amount on the tops of my cheekbones and it's going to work as a very subtle highlighter. And because it's not a frosted finish like a lot of the highlighters that we're used to, it doesn't make the texture of the skin look too bad. And it gives that kind of iridescent apricot finish, which is beautiful. Now, you've got two options for lips. The first one is the Sexy Balm by L'Oreal in the shade Gossip. This is my go-to everyday pop of colour on the lips. It's very sheer and it just gives you a wash of colour and your lips look beautifully hydrated. The second option is the Melted Matte Lipstick by Too Faced in the shade Feeling Myself. And this is a really beautiful coral shade. This is a matte finish lipstick but I'm going to be applying my sexy balm over the top. I'm doing this to make the lips look more hydrated but also to tone down the punchiness of that coral lipstick. And as you can see it just goes better with the eyes and the cheeks. Corals work beautifully whether you're pale, tan or deep. There's varying shades of coral to suit all skin tones. So let me know in the comments section would you rock this look? Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you've missed my previous tutorial it's on screen now and it's clickable. You can also click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!